pretty advanced for its time. And um, I'm also going to ask, did these blue avians and other ETs, did they walk amongst these ancient Egyptian people? Were they there with them and they, were they like talking to them and so forth? I don't get it. They were there talking to them and the, they were talking to these aliens. I'm getting that himself, Thoth, incarnated into these human bodies and they brought forth advanced uh, technology or information from their origins to help evolve the human consciousness here on earth at the time but i am also getting that some of these some of these times as a lot of these ets when they would incarnate these very advanced ets they would use this as power over others he's saying this plays a role this played a role there on here on earth and this was meant to happen he's also saying even though it may seem very negative and like this was meant to happen on this time on Earth. I'm going to ask him, why was this meant to happen? Why was there meant to be control amongst the people? He is saying this is already the way that Earth was going at the time. And for humans to break free from their 3D mind or unconscious mind, they needed to be opp oppressed. He's saying the oppressed person in the relationship. <laughs> He's talking about like a man and a woman now. The the, the abused in the relationship actually builds emotional depth and depth. And he's saying eventually that person will learn to stay away from that other person and to learn self-love and independency, an independent emotion or range. He's saying using this analogy, this is what the ancient Egyptian people were going through. They were struggling and they needed to break free from this. And in the long run, this helped them to break free from this control and manipulation on earth. He's also saying this is where the human race was at there uh, back in these times. It was at that vibrational level. It wasn't very high vibrational. So it allowed for different energies to take control or manipulate different types of people or different times. He's also saying this was needed to show contrast here on earth and duality. The human race actually needed duality in order to ascend. To see the light and see the dark and he's also saying this time on earth where they worshiped gods this is a vibrational level of where they were at at the time and this was this was meant to happen at that time for them to worship these type of uh, and it was actually good for them at times these gods acted as gods on the other side and were able to deliver energy to the egyptian people and other people that wanted to connect with them He's saying he is happy the way Earth has turned out. Miraculously, he's saying the human race is very resilient and they will carry this energy of resiliency into the next age, into the new Earth, and they will continue to fight for themselves, fight for who they are. He's saying it's very empowering knowing that the humans can fight for who they are and know who they are and to awaken to who they are every single lifetime, because we forget every single time <laughs> who we are. This is one of our main strong suits, is remembering who we are, which builds a stronger connection to our soul and into the divine and to source. He is also saying you are no longer have to forget everything in future lifetimes. Here on earth, we will remember more every lifetime. We won't have to forget everything anymore. He's saying if you want to remember who you really are or things about your many lifetimes, just ask. Ask and that will come true. It will come forth into your life. But he's also saying in the meantime, it is important to stay in the present moment and nourish who you are in the here and now. That is most important. I'm feeling a lot of energy in my heart chakra from Thoth right now. Pretty interesting. If you can tell, he's quite a bit of different energy than some of the other blue avians that I channel that are more high dimensional. I actually usually sense Thoth. He's around, I think, uh, from sixth to the ninth dimensional frequency, around that range. <laughs> the blue avians that I usually channel are more high, high dimensional. He's talking about he has fun helping others on the other side and talking to others, other humans here 
on the other side. He said he works with some of the other Egyptian gods to still bring through this light here today. People that are, are interested in this shall connect with it if they, if they feel or if they so choose. He's pointing at me and saying, you are a teacher. And he's also pointing at all of you, saying, you are a teacher as well. He's saying, I've heard them say this to me before, you are your best teacher. It's very empowering knowing that you, yourself, you are your best teacher. I love that. I'm going to ask him if he realized that he was avian or blue avian during these lifetimes. Him and Ra, the god Ra. He's just kind of laughing and just kind of, he just, like, he just thinks it's funny that I'm interested in this kind of stuff, I think. <laughs> he said he did realize he was blue avian and he would connect with the blue avians while incarnated here in human form and work with them to create new hieroglyphs, to write scriptures, to expand consciousness in general. He quite enjoyed doing this, connecting in this way to the Blue Avians. He says he was quite a bit more advanced than most humans who were here on Earth when he incarnated here, and quite a bit more intelligent than most. And he says he was able to use that to his advantage to get to where he wanted to go, do the things that he needed to accomplish or wanted to do here on Earth. He's saying him and Ra played two different roles, saying that he created from his knowledge, his intelligence, and connected on the other side as well, and was here to bring forth a certain type of energy through that type of knowledge and intelligence and sight and foresight and knowingness. But he's saying, on the other hand, uh, Ra was a different type of blue avian. He was... So one of the things that Ra was supposed to do was bring forth the energy of the sun and show the importance that the sun has here on earth and that in the light codes that come from the sun. One of the things that he did was amplify these light codes that were coming from the sun so that people could tap into those. Any that so choose. He's uh, saying that Ra actually feel Ra stepping forward quite a bit. <laughs> Ra coming forward. <laughs> I was trying to talk a thought and then Ra was like, ooh. He's saying this was good for the Egyptian people. They needed something that they could call upon that was tangible, a being or a god, so that they could connect with the sun's energy. And I provided that for them. And I was very happy to do so. He finds it quite funny and interesting that people worshipped him at the time. But he's also saying that was for a purpose and that was for a reason and that was good at the time for them to worship him and to connect in with his energy, connect in with the sun. And a lot of his energy, it feels almost like a transmuting type of energy, a phoenix light type of energy, like fire of the phoenix, which makes sense because he was connected to the sun and through him the Egyptian people were able to transmute a lot of their heaviness through him using this type of energy within themselves as it touched many of them to help transmute and become awakened, open, have more of an open consciousness, and a lifting of energy and frequency. Well, that's just, this is pretty quite a note. This is quite a lot, isn't it? I did not expect this. I really did not expect this in this uh, channeling. It's really cool diving, delving in deeper to this stuff, isn't it? I really like this a lot. <laughs> he, he's, uh, Thoth has, has a good energy. He's quite smiling. One of the things he's saying, he says, we all know there was lots of control and manipulation at this time, <laughs> but we can look at the positives, the lighter parts of this time that came through during this time, and we can connect with those. That is one of the cool things about duality is that you can see the contrast and you can pick and choose what energy you want in your life and what you resonate with. He's saying, go forth and live your life the way you want to and manifest what you want. I love that. And he's about to exit now. And he's saying, give yourself some props here. Not many people can do it like you guys can on Earth. Awaken to you are thinking about these things like starseed origins, spirituality. Got this. And uh, he's just stepping back now. Tell me what you guys thought about this. And if you have anything to add, that would be really cool. And what kind of energies that that you sense from this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off now. And this is part one of ancient civilizations. And the next one 
I'm doing the Bird Tribes, which is part two. Now I'm going to be talking more about the Native Americans and, and things like that, and the influences different energies had on them. And it's going to be pretty cool. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching.